That's funny. <laughs> Sharon says I talk too much. I'm not sure about that. I told her I don't really talk that much. Maybe she's laughing. <laughs> I do talk. I talk a lot. Uh, yes. Welcome to SSK Yarners. My name is Karen and I am coming to you from North Carolina. And my name is Sharon and I'm coming from Northeast Georgia. How yeah. are you today? <laughs> yeah, how are you today? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Our sun just came out. It's been a very gloomy day. We've had so much rain, 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 but the sun is finally out. So, so it's a good day. Well, that's, a good, that's a good thing. And we do need rain. I mean, goodness gracious, we do need rain. I say that all the time. We don't need rain. We've had enough <laughs> rain. I don't think anything can die in the next four months uh, if we didn't have any rain. <laughs> We've had That's so not true. <laughs> yeah, my front yard is literally a mud puddle. We had, there's a uh, puppy in the neighborhood. She loves to come visit. Her name is Darby. She's adorable, black lab. She comes to visit and she likes to dig in my yard. Oh, wow. So, nice. yeah, so we have a couple of spots that are pretty muddy, and, you know, she gets yelled at all the time. I was like, she's fine. She's a puppy. It's a good day. Comes home. He's like, What's, what happened to the yard? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Rain, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to get mad at Darby. <laughs> no, we don't want him to be mad at the little puppy. <laughs> yeah, she's a sweetheart. So what's new with you? Not much. Same old, same old, just, same you know, old. plugging along day by day, <laughs> working along. on my projects, trying to get some things accomplished, realizing that, you know, we're heading towards the end of August, going into September, which means, you know, you know what's right around the corner, Christmas, so, right. you know, yeah. time to really start thinking about what am I going to do for Christmas. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, my, yes. my plan was supposed to be socks for everybody, but I haven't made one pair, so that is not happening. Yeah, well, unless you make some worsted weight socks, you know, because they do take a lot of time to finish. That's and, true. Uh, you know, and there's nothing wrong with a good old pair of worsted socks to put on a, on when it's cold and the floors get cold. The floors get cold in my house, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, glad to have something warm on my feet in the winter, if we get winter. You know? yeah, that's true. You never know. Here, we should, we, I think we'll always get winter here, but down there, you may not get winter. No. Last year was, was good. It, we had a good winter, you know. But, of course, I don't mind wearing a sweater because I make things like that. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm just curious. I don't know about you guys, but what is a good winter to you? To me? Yes. For me? Oh, if I had my perfect winter, I'd probably have a couple weeks where it's really cold and little and snowy. And then the rest of the time, it would just be, you know, cool. You know? <laughs> so 70 degrees as opposed to 20. <laughs> well, I don't mind 60 or even 50, but I do. <laughs> that is not really a winter. <laughs> I like, I like, like last year, the winter was nice in that it was really, really crisp in the morning when I would go out and walk, you know, I'd wear my vest and my hat and my mitt and go walking. And then in the afternoon, maybe you just need a light sweater or something, you know, that's, that's oh. my kind of fall. <laughs> <laughs> you just want fall all winter long. <laughs> but I do like snow, so I don't mind, I don't mind some snowy days either. I sort of. I always think it's nice to have a day where you're almost forced to be inside, you know, and people can't go to work. Like when my kids were young, I always liked, I lived up north, and so I always liked having those snow days where the kids were home and, you know, you could just have the kids home and just be cozy in the house, you know. Not and look out the house. window and see all the snow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are beautiful days because I grew yeah. up up north too. Not as far north as you. You were up in the snowy country of what, Buffalo? Yeah. yeah, outside of Buffalo. But yeah, but I always enjoyed those because, you know, the kids were home and it was just nice, you know, didn't have to worry about them. And they were home and they were safe. They weren't at school coming home on a bus, you know. Or yeah, like that's that. true. That's true. I do miss the winters going into New York City, you know, going to Rockefeller Center, 
you know, all the wonderful shopping there. Yeah, I do miss those and putting on your, you know, your snow boots and trudging in the city for the day. Yeah, I do miss yeah. that. But yeah. But it bit but it was only for a day. Like, you know, if you could just have short periods of time like that, that's the thing, you know. So I you know, but so fall up. with the occasional snow. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. would be my kind of winter. Fall with yeah. an occasional snow. Yeah. That would be, that's like, uh, that's like summertime. I wish it could be like 79 degrees all summer. Yeah. 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 I like, the, I like the summer. I do. I love the summer. All right. So nothing else happening. Nothing new. Yeah, that I can think of offhand. Nothing's, nothing's really new or happening, you know, except for me, I'm happening. <laughs> <laughs> you are happening. That's right. You are happening. So let's see, we are, we should probably mention, we are a podcast about crafting. We do a lot of knitting, crochet, obviously you do sewing, right? Because you have a beautiful, yes. another beautiful quilt behind you. Uh, some needle felting, machine knitting, a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, that's what we are. That's what we're about. Today, uh, I have a couple knitting projects. I know you have knitting. You also have a, a crochet project. And uh, why don't you tell us about that gorgeous quilt behind you? Oh, this, this quilt here is called basically a whack and stack. Very simple, no, uh, no necessary pattern, you know. It's just a bunch of quilt blocks cut to the same size, and then you just cut them apart and restitch them after you mix them up a little bit. And that's all I did. So it was a very large quilt. This is like 50-some inches by 68 inches. It, this is still a good size to get under on the couch or pull up, you know, over your uh, lap um, on a cozy wintry night, which we don't have many of, but uh, it was double its size. So I just, I whacked it in half and put borders on both. And this is one half. And I have another quilt that's very similar um, that I finished also. So this quilt, I actually ex uh, experimented with doing some free motion quilting in you know, it's far from perfect, but hey, it's an experiment and I'm just glad to have it done. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun to make. Yeah, it, it really is gorgeous. I'm trying to uh, adjust the, oh. We'll figure out who, who will get this. It, it won't be a quilt I keep. It'll be something I give away. And plus the other one, I'll give it to either one of my children or someone. I'll find I'll find someone to give it to. <laughs> there you go. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and uh, lucky that you got to split it in half. I yes, it didn't. It didn't have any borders on when I stored it up in the closet for years. <laughs> So it was easy to find the center port part and just, you know, cut it and, um, you know, make it into two quilts rather than one seeing, big quilt. Uh, I remember seeing a show on uh, free form quilting a while back, several years ago. And, well, that was pretty, uh, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. 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 It would be even better if I had a long arm quilting machine, but I don't. So that's why the smaller size works out better for me. <laughs> And now two people get to enjoy it as opposed to one. So exactly, two very lucky recipients. Well, one you're giving one away, keeping one. So no, I'm not keeping either. No, oh, I you're have, not. So two no. lucky recipients. Wow. And no. I see. You know, this is okay. So I, I have some family members with lots of tattoos. Like I mean, like sleeves, lots of tattoos. And I love just to kind of like look and, and look at all the different tattoos. I don't have any myself, I'm too chicken, but I, I appreciate looking at tattoos and I love to, you know, I don't know, there's just so many different ones on uh, some of my family members and that quilt, I don't know what made me think of that, but there's so many different fabrics on there that every corner I look at is different. Now I, I see some snowmen um, up there. Oh my gosh. Yes, there's a lot of differences in the fabrics, but I try to keep it mainly to, you know, reds and greens. So. <laughs> yeah, did I see a penguin? Yes, there's some penguins in there. So cute. Some poinsettias, some snowmen. 
Christmas trees, uh, you know, yeah, I holly. see the poinsettias are pretty too. Yeah. 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 And so I think you take out, you would just take out and every time you did, you'd see something different. Yeah. There's, and there's even, um, like there's wise men, like there's fabric in there oh, that really? looks like there's kings or wise men, I call them, you know, in there. I don't think, yeah, some right here. Oh, so pretty. And what is the back? What's on the back? The back is just a uh, polka dot, red and white polka dot. <laughs> That's pretty. You and could it's flannel. turn it around if you wanted. Yeah, you could. That's, but yes, why you would could. you, right? Why would you? Because well, then you could see. See all the my menagerie of quilting. Yeah. Which is far from perfect. But you know what? I'm just glad to have it finished. And, life life uh, is not about perfection. No. Well, <laughs> it shouldn't be about perfection. Well, perfection is near impossible, right? Yes. As a perfectionist, I would say it, perfection is near impossible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I would say, too. I mean, I think I'm perfect. But yeah, well. my husband says no. <laughs> <laughs> None of us is perfect. Even though you strive for it, you always, even though you strive for it, I always find like there's a little blip. There's a little, oh, well, you missed the stitch there or something. It's I would say you are definitely a perfectionist. I am not a perfectionist. I'm okay with, I'm okay with not perfect. I like good quality. Uh, but I don't really strive for perfection. I just do what I could do. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, my husband's going to let me know anyway. <laughs> we're not going to, we're not going to keep going on that subject. We're just going to call it a day on that. <laughs> you know, it's something, it's not, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Sharon's a perfectionist. I really am. Not that I'm perfect, but I really am. I strive for that. And that's why little things bother me. Yeah. So much. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> me, I'm like, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Move on. Get, <laughs> yeah. get on with it. You know, <laughs> we're like, I don't know. Could I fix that? Or it's like, no, nah, no, nah, that more important things to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. my goodness. So, so um, I have a hand knit sweater on that I finished. That's nice. You do too, don't you? Yes, but I've shown that we've I've I've worn this one before. I, well, like I have it too. This is my home body. I love my home body. I happen to just throw it on today because I wear it all the time. It goes really cute with my pink shorts. Yes. Yeah. It's lovely. I did start a second one, but I don't did know you? where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've again I have like six or seven projects going. That one kind of I forgot all about it until I put this on today. I'm like, yeah, I started a second one. What happened to that? No idea where it is. It, it'll pop up sooner or later, but what's the name of yours? It isn't, there is no name. It's a no name pattern. It's a no name. It's a no name. It's a pattern that I just, I just, I just did it on my you own. You just knit? Yes. Wow. I just, I did a lace border that I saw somewhere and just did plain knit and then you know, just followed a sort of a pat pattern for making a neck. It wasn't anything specific. And then I just picked up stitches and put a little lace and I did a little, it's hard to tell because it sort of gets lost. It's such a small border, but I did it on the arms too. Well, look at you. I think you need to write it up. It's, it's a, it's a mishmash of different uh, conglomerations of patterns that I took from little here to little there and a little there. That's how a lot of people design patterns. Yeah. And it's just, it's drop spell. And I just love, I love this yeah. color. And I just love, I really do love this color. I would, I definitely need to order more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just I really do like this color. So we were going to talk about finished objects, but why don't we, because it's a perfect segment. Why don't we talk about drops bell yarn? Oh, yes. Well, we can talk about my project. <laughs> my project that I started, which is the uh, Yarnspirations that you showed top the other day, the patents, you used patents grace. Well, I didn't have any patents grace, so I had to purchase, pat, you know, uh, yarn. And so I did. I bought some uh, bell 
drops bell and uh, it'll work wonderfully because it has nearly the same amount of yardage, which tells me the yarn is about the same size. Great. And then I thought, well, they use a mercerized cotton. So maybe I should look and see if they have a mercerized cotton. By golly, they did. Drops musket. 100% cotton. Mercerized. So I thought, great, I'll get some of this. And it, this is turquoise. Of course, it's turquoise. And it's being paired with white because they make a nice summer color combination, right? So I'm knitting it along after I decided I wasn't going to do a gay swatch. And I restarted it a couple times, went down a needle size, still too big, went down a size. Now it's going to work. But notice as I was in the process that I bought the same yardage required as for the grace yarn, but this yarn has. 109 yards versus the grace which had 136 yards so i guess thankfully i'm on a smaller needle making a smaller size and keeping my fingers crossed that i will have enough yarn to finish my project which is coming along quite nicely i will show that what, i have what some yarn that, what's the name of that pattern again i totally forgot uh fade to summer gradient right. knit t-shirt and so this is how it's coming along. I have started the gradient up here. It's two strands of the turquoise with one of blue. I'm nearly finished with that, which is a good thing because I don't have much turquoise left. <laughs> but it'll work out. It'll be fine. So we'll see. It looks great. It looks really good. I really like the color and I think I really like it once it's uh, marled in there. And, uh, you know, I'll end with the white. I maybe should have done it the other way so that the blue was up here, <laughs> but I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, is it the equal amounts of yarn? What do you mean? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Because I think you no. need less of the bottom color than you do the top color, right? Uh, no. I think it's the opposite way. I think it's all wrong. Yeah, I think there's supposed to be less of the white. Oh, okay, the top color, okay. Yes, because the blue gets carried up much farther. Oh. But I only have one full skein of blue, which is good because it go, it'll be the two of white and one of blue. Got it, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so we'll see, but lesson learned. I sh and, and I, and, you know, I was very careful to look at the bell and compare it to the grace yarn. I don't know what I was thinking or why I didn't think to compare the yardage. Now it still would work and you know, but why didn't I compare the yardage? I would feel much better having an extra yard, you know, an, an extra ball or two of yarn to work with because then I wouldn't feel like, ooh, I might have to cut this short. I don't want it to be a crop top, <laughs> you know? But uh, lesson learned, and you know, pay attention to that. Plus, I mean, you know, with that much less yardage, it's telling me the yarn is a little heavier, which should have given me a clue that, yeah, you're probably not going to use the same size needle because your gauge is going to be way too big. So. Yeah, and, and I've always done that, uh, substituting yeah. yarn. There, there's an yeah. actual art to substituting yarn, right? You can't just substitute anything. And you can't just substitute a worsted for a worsted. And yeah. that's the first thing that I do is I go, is it a hundred gram ball or is it a 50 gram ball? Cause you know, they're, they're sold uh, frequently in bulk, you know, quantities. So, and then you have to see, well, how many yards does this one have compared to the one that the pattern is calling for? And when I did the patents comparison, right, with the, cause I used some of the Ella Ray yarn, the Ella Ray cotton, and it was literally exact. So I was like, that's a perfect match. And, and you know, you can always go on, what is it, yarnsub.com for yarn substitution uh, and find out. And they'll give you a percentage. It's like 98% the same, 89% right. the same. So, uh, but when you're in the store, you can use the app. But if, if you don't have internet connection, you can always uh, just, you know, figure out uh, if they're equal by the yardage compared to the grams. Uh, yeah, because you can do the math, but. Definitely. I think yeah. I actually did go to uh, the yarn substitution uh, and looked, you know, 
and saw that bell was very, very comparable. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought, oh, great, because I liked that yarn anyways. It was on sale. And I thought, oh, great. I never, I just, it, you know, it's just like one of those things. Like your mind just doesn't think about yeah. it. You just assume. You, got, you right? got caught up in the moment for the sale. and yeah, yeah, for the sale and trying to get it ordered before it wasn't on sale. Because I think the sale ended like the 31st of July and it was already July 30th. And, you know. I guess, you know, you just think 50 grams of cotton should be, you know, and it's both, they're both considered DK weight. So, you know, you just think it should be more similar, but it wasn't, but it, it, it'll end up being okay. You know, yeah. thankfully, I think yeah. it'll be, well, that's but like, if worst uh, comes to worst, I'll just order another ball of yarn. I just, it's just we, the waiting. We talked about that earlier. So here's two fingering weight uh, skeins of yarn, right? One only has 400 grams. One has 463. A big difference. A big difference. So if you're substituting yarn, it's really important you get a comparable yarn. Yeah. Right. Very. And, yeah. Yeah, and and comparable, and you have to realize if you're going to substitute it anyway, you have you may have to make other adjustments because you're not gonna you may not get gauge. You might have to go down a needle size. You may have to go up a size in the pattern or down a size in the pattern. You know, you can work around it, but it is a little bit more figuring. Yeah, yeah, you it, can certainly work around it, but honestly, there's times that I just don't even want to risk it, and I don't want to do the math. Right, lazy, right. Lazy but you know, this is such a simple, simple knit. There's no, you know, there's no worrying about the neckline. There's no worrying about sleeves or anything like that. So, if worst comes to worst. It may be more boxy, it may be more loose, you know. Like tangle. Yeah. It might be shorter because I run out of yarn. Yeah. Now you <laughs> said it was interesting because you were telling me earlier shipping is a flat rate from that company. Well, it was for the amount of yarn that I bought. Got so it. I think it will increase after it reaches a certain um, weight. I think it oh. still goes by weight. Okay. But the shipping, you know, from them you know, I figured it out. It was only 16 and change for each of the tops that I'm making. And that includes the shipping and the shipping was uh, $3.99, not dollars, but British sterling. So convert that to dollars, it's four something, which isn't bad. Yeah, it was under, yeah, $5, under $5, dollars I think, was it four, $4.63 for shipping? To come from England, that's pretty darn good. Yeah. It's yeah. And a warehouse. Yeah. Wool yes. warehouse. I think, and I've ordered from them before, and it took about two weeks, which I didn't think was horrible yeah. um, to wait. You know, it would be horrible now because I'm in the process, but I mean, it's still it's still not horrible. And uh, you know, and they do have good sales, and they seem to run a drops, uh, stu you know, garn studio or drops yarn sale every summer. And mm -hmm. so I just happened to hit on it; it was perfect. And even yeah. if it's and there's not on the, sale, it's not too expensive. Yeah, if you go to garnstudio.com or drops, uh, there is a, uh, they do have a United States location uh, where you can get the the same exact yarn. Uh, right. You said it was cheaper in the UK on sale, so. Right, right. So, yeah. and I mean, you know, it is what it is. It, it'll all work out. That's right. <laughs> but it's, it's a lesson learned. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's something that, you know, and that's the one thing about mistakes. Now, people don't like, I don't like to make mistakes, but the one thing I take away from making a mistake is chances are I won't do that again. Like I will learn, hopefully I will learn and think yeah. about it. Like next time I'm ordering some yarn and if I'm trying to substitute not using the call for yarn, to, oh, what's the yardage? Oh yeah, it's DK, but how much yardage is in that? Is it more of a worsted or is it yeah. a light DK, you know? You'll know for sure next time. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I've made that mistake way too many times. And I just, you know, I said, I'm just going to learn how to do it. And I don't want to make, because you go through all that trouble of making a garment. And you're like, I guess I should have gauge swatched, you know? And it's like, yeah, no. Even with a garment like that, you know, unless you you know the yarn, right? If you know the yarn, it's one thing, but yep. yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that. That's that. Yeah. All right. Well, you want to see what I'm working on? Yeah, let's let's see what you're working on. I am continuing with my spark cardigan, Andrea oh. Mallory, and I finished the sleeves. I showed them last time, and yeah. now I'm working on the body. 
All right. And so I have the ribbing done. Where is the beginning? Here it is, because you see my steaking section right here. Yeah. All these stitches here is where it'll be cut, which still, kind of, uh, still kind of freaks me out. Um, and then she has, and I'm assuming this is to help make the steaking better. Change it. So you could see right there. Uh, so I guess we're going to cut up there. So, so this is how much I have done. I have all the ribbing and then I have uh, the start of the pattern. So um, love the colors, love the yarn. Again, I've got the yarn in the shop. Uh, if you want to go check that out, but I, I absolutely love it. So far, so good. Um, yeah, I love it. Slow going. It's slow going. I knew it was going to take me two months. Uh, might even take me longer, but that's okay. Yeah, I don't mind. So yeah, it's a lot of work. And I think work. color work can slow you down because, you know, look, I'm doing okay. I think. I, I think so too. I think it looks great. Yeah, I was like, I hope it's not too tight. And every once in a while, I'll go try to stretch it. It's, it gives a little bit, but not a whole lot. But it, there's no, well, I have a little puckering here. So it's it a might little, block out. Hopefully. You know, blocking does a, does a wonderful thing yeah. yes, for I a lot of little blips. On the bottom, it's, it seems to be a little snugger than the top. So that means I'm getting better at it. So yeah, I, I haven't done extensive color work in the past. So me neither. Why. So it, it'll be interesting because I think, you know, I did the little blocks from Arnie and Carlos, mm -hmm. you know, and that was color work. And some of it blocked out really, really well. I can tell that, you know, I did better on some than others, but um, it is, it is a learning experience. And, mm -hmm. you know, my socks are still on hold. <laughs> and color works my purple well. and yeah. But uh, every once in a while, I think, oh, I need to get at those and take them apart. Otherwise, and they're going to really... become a UFO. Yeah, well, I don't want to have that because I don't have too many of those, but I do have some, but not many. I would like to keep it to a minimum. <laughs> I don't yeah. yeah, I still haven't gone yeah. through mine. I still have to go through mine. It's, it's on my list. I have to do it before December. So, yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah, got to get. So that get was clear that them up. Spark Cardigan by uh, Andrea Mowry. Absolutely love it. So far, so good. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. It's going to be pretty when it's done. It'll yeah. be nice. Yeah. To wear on your winter days. <laughs> on my on my fall winter days. Yeah. <laughs> so remember this one from last time? Yes. So I get the Yarnspirations uh, emails. I actually, I have three of them in my inbox. I haven't looked at them yet. Um, so this is called Get In Line Knit Tank. And my goal is to do, actually, I think I'm going to do between these two because I don't want it this short, but I don't want it that long. So I'll do in between. Well, that's the beauty of that. You can do however you long you want. That's why I love the, you know, when, because, you know, I don't have to, it wouldn't be that hard, right? It should really No, be. but I mean, but the longer one might have a little bit more stitches at the bottom to allow for hips. Yes. Right? Yeah. So yeah. it is nice to have the options. And then it, the pattern will tell you, of course, yardage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's no math to do. And it called for the silk bamboo, the patent silk bamboo, which, what do you know? I just happen to have some in the stash, right? So I actually started it, and that's probably why I could have had more done on my cardigan, but I really wanted to start this. That's such a pretty pattern. And oh my God, it's really beautiful. Look at the color. Um, and it actually is, it's a beautiful pattern. Uh, the pattern is um, slip, it's actually a slip stitch in the middle there, but it's, your, it's a garter ridge. You're knitting every row and slipping one stitch. Um, so we'll see how the pattern turns out to be. Uh, but so far, I really love it. And again, when you can get a free pattern and the yarn is in your stash, uh, I can't even tell you how much the yarn costs because I've had it in my stash for, oh my gosh, can I be embarrassed and say 10 years? Uh, honestly, uh, yeah. and I, it wasn't a small quantity. I had like eight skeins of this stuff. So, uh, and it's so soft. It's a beautiful color. I really like it. 
beautiful color. So I'm excited about that. So uh, it may not be finished by you know the time summer ends, but that's okay. But that's really okay. Yeah, next summer. Yeah, it's done in pieces. There's a front and a back. So uh, I, you know me, I prefer that. I prefer seaming. Um, I have no issues with seaming. I've done a lot of it, so I'm real comfortable with it. And it adds structure to a garment. I cannot say that enough. Seaming adds structure. It does. Uh, I, I like that. And stability, not just structure, but stability as well. So, yeah. Yes, unless the designer adds some feature in to add st stability and structure. There are, there are people who do that in their patterns, you know, so. But anyways, yes, that's going to be very nice, and it'll be yeah, lovely to wear. Another, another yarn inspirations, right? Yeah, I'm on this right. yarn inspirations kick. I did start, I know I talked about last time, that sun pillow I wanted to do. Um, you and I talked about this, because I, I did the same mistake, didn't I? Uh, I just grabbed my yellow worsted weight yarn out of my stash, grabbed the needle, started making it, came out to be this big. So I'm like, wait, what? what's going on here? So I went to a bigger needle, did it again. It was like this big. I'm like, something turned out that yarn was a super bulky yarn that they used. Yeah. I thought it was just worsted weight, but I didn't read the finer details. So that's big still difference. in the works. Big difference. big difference in the size and uh, big difference in the amount of holes that you'll get for you know, when you're putting stuffing in, you don't want the big help, you know, the big holes. So, um, you know, a big needle and a finer yarn, you get bigger holes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, right now I'm going to try to do it with uh, two strands held together. So we'll see. Yeah. I think that'll work much better. Definitely. And I think that's such a cute pattern. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's really cute. Yeah. And that was my crochet project. I just don't have it. Yeah. Well, do you have any finished objects? Uh, oh, 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 yeah, 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 I forgot. Or do you have any more uh, works in progress or are you good? I have works in, prog in progress, but that's all right. Show yeah, me finished it. objects. Let's well, progress. <laughs> I always have works in project, pro project, words. Words are very difficult and always after works, we have projects. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can't say works in process. But I have, um, I have two. I have a pair of vanilla socks. This is yarn that has come from my stash. This was also yarn that I um, purchased from Wool Warehouse quite a few years ago. It's very sparkly. I don't know if the camera, if you can see how it's very sparkly. And um, I thought I would sparkle. It really is. Yeah, I thought I would uh, take this out because these are all like fall colors, orange and like rust and some brown. And uh, the yarn is by Rico, Rico Design, and it was called Las Vegas. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and this, this also, just like the cotton, um, you know, the Regia cotton yarn, I started knitting it and I'm looking at the toes thinking, these are huge, these are huge. And I usually do 56 stitches and I compared them to my other socks and they were huge. So I just dropped four stitches. I don't care if it's a little bit looser around the toe, that's not gonna bother me. So, so that's, four yeah. stitches. Oh wow, so you just do plain vanilla? Plain vanilla, I was thinking of doing a pattern, but you know, Sometimes just having a bit of, uh, plain vanilla is just like fly. Not that all patterns are difficult or anything. They're not and they're enjoyable. But sometimes a pattern on top of a yarn that's striped or whatever, it, you lose the pattern. Yeah. I don't know that that would happen in here because the changes in the color are so subtle. So it might not be so bad. But just keeping them vanilla. Like just keeping them vanilla. There's a lot happening in that yarn. I think I would just keep it vanilla. <laughs> I don't know. I think our internet is slow because I didn't hear everything you said. You just sort of froze up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> so what I said was, I think that yarn really should be kept a vanilla because there's a lot going on. Yeah, it should. It is. It's going to be vanilla because that's what I started and I'm not going to choose any time. 
Yeah, and it's super sparkly. I'm wondering if there's Lorex. It is super sparkly, so it'll be fun to wear in the fall, you know. So the other project that I'm doing is, believe it or not, <laughs> these are going to be fingerless gloves. <laughs> so I just started them. I just started. Those are the, you know, the wrist. I decided to do them two at a time, magic loop, because, you know, what's better than having one done, but having two done. <laughs> and this is actually called the Harmonies Everyday Mitts. This was uh, one of Toad Hollow's, uh, uh, they had a knit along thing going on. I forget what they called it. Some, you know, I forget what they called it now. Jeepers. It's terrible. But anyways, the oh now you froze. She froze. Definitely internet connection. So we'll have to wait for Sharon to come back. Let's see. All right. Are you back? Yes, are you back? Are. She's about to talk about something. I'm like, she's gone. I don't know if she's coming back. So, yeah, I was going to continue to talk about something. So I. Well, have so time. anyways, these are these are very simple. They're going to be a very simple knit. I think they'll be. It's DK yarn, and um, it's very similar to the stock pattern, the Harmony stock pattern. So. Of course, it calls for a one by one rib, but I really hate doing one by one. So I did two by two on the wrist, you know, and they're, and they're very, look at how different they are, right? That's because I'm using this. I'm using this. <laughs> yeah, they're totally different. Yeah, they're totally different. But that's okay. That's the uh, special hat blank I made you last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a one of a kind. Yeah. I pulled it out so and I said, I'm going to make these mitts from them. So it, it's just, it's just like, okay, the beginning must was a lot of the white with the speckles. And then the second, you know, what I did is because it was a sock blink, a single one. Right. And that's why they're so different. Cause a lot of the sock blinks that you have given me are double ones. Yeah. And, and they come out pretty much the same, right? Um, because the two strands are together. But this being a single, that's why it's so different. But I, I don't mind. I don't. I think they're going to be fun when they're done. Oh, I just cute. Yeah. So what I did is I didn't want to cut it. I didn't want to cut it. I just didn't have the heart to just cut it. So I wound off. I've cut like, them before. Easy peasy. I, I just wound off like 50, 50 grams. So that's the 50 gram ball I'm working from. And then the rest is the sock blank. And it's working ah, out fine. I, I love, love them. It. They're going to be so cute. I, yeah. And I. Go ahead. I was going to say, I put it in one of my fun summer bags. Love your bags. Love, love. Especially that flower one. I love my flower. Well, bag. it has, it has all the color. It's like, it's colorful. Oh like yeah. It has all the same colors. Same same similar colors and it's just fun oh my god so, it's yeah. a winter knit in a summer bag summer bag hey there's nothing better right uh speaking of your bags uh, our sale in the etsy shop is still going on the um my birthday sale oh uh, yes we're we, getting toward the end of the month yeah 15 to 40 percent off and i have uh i guess i could talk about it briefly really briefly um uh, i'm putting together some kits birthday kits oh cool so it's going to be bags and yarn, and I'm going to have a flat rate for all of the kits, uh, and it's going to be for one week starting on Sunday. So uh, just really quickly. So one of Sharon's bags. Again, these are the amazing sock sacks that she puts together. It snaps closed, or you can fold it over so it stays open, right? This is how you use yours. I use mine that way because the clicking, I don't like the clicking. Yes, I love, I love the bag. Clicking. Yeah. I love the bag, but the clicking I keep to a minimum. <laughs> and when you put the yarn in, even if it's folded over, it still stays shut. Yeah. 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 I, I love these bags. And there's no, you know, you don't hear there's, the click. No, as you and you can knit right from the bag and it sort yes. of holds it keeps the yarn 
it helps the yarn and the tangles yeah. a little bit. Not that it's perfect, but it does help. Especially if you knit two at a time, right? It yeah. really does help. But yeah, so we've put together uh, some sets, uh, a bag with a 50 gram skein of yarn, and some I'm pairing with a 50 gram sock length. Um, and there's gonna be a flat, a flat rate, like a flat, uh, how much it's gonna cost. So I put together some really adorable ones. Yeah, that's cute. Oh, this flip flop, like how crazy. And then I, think I love that. that one, this flower bag. I just dyed these yesterday. I love them. Again, the bag, the skein, the 50 gram skein or the sock blank. Uh, there's a couple more in here. This is going to be Sunday, uh, starting on Sunday for just the last week of August. And Sunday just happens to be the big Your birthday. birthday. <laughs> oh, that's why we're doing these, right? Uh, yeah, so here's another one. I love the hearts. I did a yeah. delphinium blue that's just gorgeous. It, it matches yeah. really nice. It's pretty. It matches perfect. Uh, and of course, this one. <sighs> Like, I do love I it even, too. do I even like, oh, you make so many great bags and I have so many of them. I want every time I just want them, you know? So I know Pamela just bought a cherry bag and she absolutely loves it. So, so these kits will be in the shop on Sunday, the 23rd of August, 2020 for $23 for both the yarn and the bag. So, um, yeah, so that'll be Sunday. I thought I'd just throw that in there really quickly. Uh, yeah, if Perfect. you're watching this and you're interested, perhaps I might put them up a little sooner if I have enough time. So we'll see, but I'm not gonna announce it anywhere else but here. So yeah, yeah, fun. So it'll be fun. That'll yeah. Be yeah. Any yep. big plans for the big day? No plans. Where am I going to go? I know. <laughs> what can I do? You know, what can I do? I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. It's all good. Well, if it's a nice day, I mean, you could drive to the beach and just at least take a walk on the beach or something, if that's what you enjoy. I mean, I would enjoy that, for, definitely. I would love to take a drive to a beach anywhere and just yeah. walk along the shore and enjoy the, uh, you know, the ocean. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Maybe, I, I love celebrating my birthday. Uh, it's, I don't know, my family was always huge on birthdays. We never had to do chores. You know, we got whatever dinner we wanted. Mine was always extra crispy KFC. Uh, I chose that every year. Um, I think everybody loved it with the mashed potatoes and gravy and all that. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I'm really just hoping maybe for a gluten-free cupcake. So, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a weird year, just a weird year. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's all good. It's all good. So Sunday, so excited. I'm a year older and I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. More wrinkles. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. So, yeah. So, so where, I know. where are we? Oh, we're on the Facebook. internet must be really bad today because it keeps slowing down. Really? Cause I, yeah. you're good on my end. Yeah. And on your, I, you keep pausing for some reason. So oh. it must be my internet. Yeah, it must be because you, you're going, you're frozen again though now. So you're frozen. But so what I'm going to do, Sharon, if you could still hear me, I'm going to start talking about my finished objects. Um, there you are. You're back. Okay, you're back. I know. See, I freeze. <laughs> yeah, you freeze. So are you done with your works in progress? If, if for works in progress, I think, you know, that's probably enough for me to have on the go at this point in time. <laughs> that's it. So she won't be sharing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not any projects. I don't have, I mean, I, that's, you know, that's what I have. That's all I have. That's all I've been working on, really. Well, I, I finished, I have finished objects, but, you know, that's yeah. We're going to talk about those now. You know, okay. So what do you have? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll talk about my finished objects. I only have two. 
uh, two more hats. Um, so obviously this is one. Here's this is George. George. I like his hat. It's nice. Uh, I have triplets. This is triplets. So uh, I have three of these that were given to me by my friend who used to manage a store, uh, a retail store, and they closed down. They went out of business. Uh, this happened to be, um, holy cow, I don't know, Brookstone. Oh my gosh. So Scott, Scott managed Brookstone. Uh, so he said, Karen, I have these heads that we put like earphone, uh, earphones and glasses on you know, would you like them? I'm like, I don't know, I guess I'll take them. But yeah, so they sit up in my in my workroom, I put hats on them, I put sunglasses on them. Uh, so this happens to be George. Um, and this is the hat. That's really cute. Isn't this nice? Yeah. So this, this was a test knit uh, for Tracy Miller, one of the grocery girls, I am fortunate enough to uh, be on the, the test knit group, uh, an amazing group of ladies. Uh, really great. So she did um, a tartan sock pattern a while ago uh, that I also tested it. Love that one. And she is made a hat. So it's color work. It's going towards my 2020 theme. So obviously the rib is solid. And then you come up and you do the tartan uh, uh, stitch here. So and I love the crown. It's really good. It is. So, um, it's a pretty fast knit again. Um, you know, when she sent the test, I'm like, oh my God, color work. It's, it's the color work year for me. This was on my list to, to learn how to do. Uh, and yeah, I did pretty good. Looks good on the inside. Yeah, Definitely. I got a little bit lazy. <laughs> a little lazy. Well, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But yeah, so I loved it. So it's called the Tartan Hat. It should probably be out uh soon if not in a day or two so you could check i out like that. that i think that i think you could use a lot of different colors you can mix you know um a variegated yarn in there really like a variegated yarn like this one yeah like that <laughs> i think that would be good <laughs> so i made two of these hats now the pattern calls for bobbles Look how cute these little bobbles are. They really are cute. And I held mohair. It does call for some mohair. I did, mm. have not weaved in the ends yet. Um, so, yeah. So what I did, I used the same brown as I, I used in that hat, actually. And I just paired it with one of my, uh, this is one of my hat blanks from last year. I don't have any more of these. Um, so it's just, it was just variegated. And I did the bobbles and I did some mohair. Uh, and oh, my God, how cute really cute and of course it's the same decreases at the top which is cute i'd like to put a pom-pom on here i have a giant pink pom-pom that i was going to use uh but i forgot to change needles from the ribbing to the main hat and what happened was it's smaller than it should be so that's why I, that's actually one of the reasons i made a second hat because i wanted to do it the correct way when I do a test knit, I like to do it exactly according to the pattern. So the bobbles that she uses are amazing. I've never done a bobble like this before. She said she combined three different bobble techniques into this one. It works great. Um, so I do highly recommend it. So this will be a, a giveaway. It's going in my giveaway pile for a young girl because uh, it's probably 13 to 14 inches. Um, so it's definitely for a young person, but um, a great hat, great pattern. Uh, and look at the variegated yarn. <laughs> it looks really great. It yeah, does. It and those bobbles really, really, really stand out. They really do. They are cute. And, and I'm tempted. I have some yarn left over. I'm tempted to make a, just a pom-pom out of the yarn to put on here. I left a long tail, you know, so they could take it on and off if they chose to do that. You know, just That's a good idea. Off. Yeah. So... Yeah, so that's my finished objects. I really love them. Yeah, it's great. Yep. So that pattern should be out. She's working on a cowl pattern now to go with this. So uh, that I'm sure will be pretty. Me, because I'll make matching ones to go in the donation pile for that. Yeah. And that's it. That's all I have as far as finished objects. Yeah. I don't know. This internet today. 
Well, That's the right. good news is you're still going. So just pretend like it's all good. You, you're not, you can't hear me though? No, you usually freeze up and then I don't hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all right. I just don't, it's going to be annoying for other people maybe to watch it, but I have this. <laughs> I was pretending I was frozen. <laughs> you were. <laughs> These are my finished uh, socks. My, um, yeah, this handmade life pattern, winter frost. I think I showed them last time. And I was not quite quite complete, but it is such a pretty it's pretty pattern and it's so easy and simple and I just love it. And this was um, scrap yarn I had made um, socks and given had given them to my niece. And this was diabolical yarn. And this is your sock blanket that you gave me. But I just really love them. And when I did the um, heel on this, I usually do. Um, the fish lips kiss and that's what this is it's just that i knit every row instead of purling back so it gave a garter ridge which makes it sort of really cushy you know so I'll, i haven't worn them we'll we'll see hopefully they'll wear well and uh i really do like them a lot they're, they're I love the beautiful blue. and i love i love the pattern i don't know you know it's just a really simple, no uh, cable or anything. It's just uh, SSK and knit two together. And it's a free pattern. She does have some really nice uh, free patterns. Yeah, those are beautiful. I'm wondering if that garter stitch on the heel would also help with the wear and tear and make them last longer too. I don't know that it's, it's really, you can, I don't, you can actually see a difference where it sticks out. You know, it really does stick out from the other yarn it feels cushier so we'll see you know i just thought i would try something different you know just try something different i like it i like it it's nice so, yeah so yeah. i'm looking forward to wearing those as well as all the other ones that i've knit <laughs> yeah george be quiet george you know <laughs> so. george is making too much noise that's funny and the other finished object i have is a crocheted object it's actually my dog um, <laughs> I had I had a pattern that I've had for a long time. It's called Magnificent Moss Basket by Joyful Yarns Crochet, and that's what it is. Let me put the front the crochet crochet basket pattern, which is really more like a bag for me because it's very um, it doesn't stand on its own, right? But that's okay. Because once I fill it with yarn, it'll be, and this was just scrap yarn. And I, and I like, it was a free pattern. I'm, I would imagine it's still free. I didn't check. But I like the reverse single crochet up here around the edge. So that's my other finished object. That's all I finished. I like it. I really like the colors too. Yes. I like the dark navy. It shows off the other, um, colors in the nautical yarn. It was Burnett, Burnett cotton. Yeah. Two strands really together. Great. Two strands together. But it but a quick knit. It was or a quick crochet project. It wasn't didn't take too long to do. Probably just a few hours, right? Well yeah, into the night, you know. <laughs> so uh here's the original. Yeah, that's the original one. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly what my pattern looks like. Yeah, it's still it's still for free. Yeah, it's still for free. Uh, what? Oh, good. She says to use red. It's pretty. I think it's really pretty, and I think you could use you know you could use whatever crochet, uh, you know, cotton threads that you have that are left over. You yeah. know, make it really colorful if you want it. She yeah. her colors are very nicely coordinated in the center. Mine was leftover yarn. Uh, from dishcloths and whatnot. So, you know, yeah. She's a super saver, Red Heart Super Saver. I have a bunch of that upstairs. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Did So in the pattern, it, it holds two together? I In the pattern, what? Uh, it holds two strands together? Yes. Two strands. That's good. Two strands throughout. And it uses two different size hooks, um, oh. an L 
a seven and an eight millimeter, which is nice because they're nice and big. Oh yeah. You know. Are those the clovers? No, I don't know what these are. My sister ordered them for me. We I were like going to do a crochet project together and I didn't have the right crochet size hook. So she ordered me a whole set. What? So it goes it goes down to, I don't know, like three whatever, small up to big. Oh, that's <laughs> really nice. I like those. And they do have it does help to have this um silicone or whatever is on plastic on the edge you know it does help yeah it help. i have yeah. the ones that they sell at joanne i oh my goodness i must have spent a year you know the 40 percent off coupon every month i'd go buy a new needle uh because yeah it really helps with my the arthritis in my hands so um yeah i remember i, I spent quite a while getting those hooks yeah <laughs> i had to get every color that they sold uh, with that with that coupon. Yes, I have old I have crochet hooks that I've had a set of for years. Like when I was really young in my twenties and stuff, and I knit or crocheted. It, it's just the metal, so it it does help to have this thicker portion to grip to, especially I think you know for our hands. I mean, even with knitting, um, with the cotton yarn on the lat, you know, the project with the, the faded three strands of cotton together. On big needles, I can only do so long. It just, you know. Boy, how I wish that I crocheted when I was young because I, I can only crochet for a couple of hours in a row and then I have to stop because it yeah. really, really hurts my hands. But yeah, those handles do help quite a bit. Yeah. They do. They, they do. do. Yeah. So let me see. I, I was uh, completely unprepared today, so I made a really quick list. So let's make sure we covered uh let's see so oh uh you want to talk about notions or favorite notions we're trying to do this each time we're eventually going to run out i think uh, although well, I you know notions, but oh yes my favorite notion yeah i'm ready i have it i can't even believe i didn't mention this the last time because i knit so many socks this is my favorite you know, notion, it goes into my sock bag when I start our sock project. Um, and it's a sock ruler, the sock ruler, www.sockruler.com. Um, in fact, you got this for me years ago. I remember. I have never lost it. <laughs> it's now, uh, I forget her name um, years ago because I had bought several because I gave yes. some giveaway. Uh, and I think I bought you and Sherlyn each one. Um, she had a section of imperfects. Yes, I remember you saying that. Yeah, and that's what I bought. And, you know, I had thanked her, you know, for doing that because I do the same thing in the shop, right? If I have imperfects, they go in the ugly sockling club. Um, so I was like, you know, thank you for allowing, you know, people who may be on a budget, you know, to be able to still purchase your product. It just, you know, it might be a little imperfect. The end might be the print might be off a little bit. The end might have a corner missing or something. So, uh, yeah. So she, but the measurements are the same. That's what's important. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, I love this because I do do my, my socks. I do knit my socks from the toe up. So I always stick this in. I know when I get to, you know, seven and a quarter, seven and a half, it's time for me to put my heel in, but I think you could use it the other way too. Cuff you down. I do. So, you know, it's just I use it the other way. Yeah, and in fact, I own two because I always lose one. <laughs> this, yeah, I it's usually I usually have a pair of socks going all the time, so it's usually in my it's usually in my sock bag, whichever you know, whichever but, one is getting to the heel first. If I have multiple socks, you know, uh, believe it or not, I have one in a clip hanging right in front of my desk. And the well, other is always in a bag somewhere. So if I yeah. finish the sock, I just haven't taken it out yet. It's always in a bag. I just, that way I just, if I need it real quick, I take it off the wall. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But it's it great. Great, great notion to have. Yeah. I, it is. If you knit socks, it's perfect. Yeah. Well, if you don't knit socks. Then you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you just want to use it as a ruler and it looks kind of resembles a foot. <laughs> And it only goes to a no, screen. no. You're right. You're still. You're good. Your face is still showing. <laughs> oh well. 
It's okay. You'll be back in a second. I'll talk about my notions. So I'm going to share two of them today. And it's so funny. I just go to my little notions bag and I just pick, pick out my favorite things because it's literally loaded. So my first one is a bread tie. I know I've talked about this in the past and Sharon's like, well, but it's not attached to any knitting. So Yes, if you do a long tail cast on and you have a long tail, you would just wind your yarn around here and it'll just hang from your knitting. But what I also use them for is for some spare yarn. So I take yarn, I wrap it around here, I leave it in my Notions case. Hey, you. This is Sharon on the telephone. We'll be right back. You talking or was I talking? <laughs> She's back. It has been, I know, it's been about a half hour, right? <laughs> it's been, so, so poof, you guys didn't even see that happening. Um, she was here, then she was gone, then I kept talking. Uh, so we took a little bit of a break. You've got your internet back on, up and running. Yes. Uh, so yeah, so you're back. That's you know, it's always funny with the internet here is we've always had issues anyways. It's, I think it's our carrier, but uh, it's beautiful. I mean, it's not raining. It's not downpouring. It's nothing, you know, but what causes it to go out? Because it just, it just goes out. It's like if I was in the middle of working and had a big project on my computer, I'd be really mad. It's the internet gremlins. You know, I, I, well, I was in computers many years ago, many years ago into computers. And the first thing that we always say is back up your work. Yeah, of course. And back up your work. Save, 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 save. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the whole time we've been, you know, doing this podcast today, it's been telling me my internet's unstable and you've been freezing. So it had to be something that was happening and just all of a sudden it said, nope, I'm not going to do this anymore. Well, the good news is when it froze, it was a beautiful picture of you just smiling. So I just <laughs> talk, right? And then Sharon was there, but technically she wasn't there. It was just a picture. So, <laughs> so I missed what you shared anyways. But when I rewatch re words, again, mouth, head, it doesn't connect. <laughs> When my phone started ringing, I'm like, I knew something was up. I'm like, maybe I should pause and pick up the phone. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. the internet rudely interrupted me. Yes. I was talking were... about my little bread tie. Oh, you know what I was going to say? Because I know you, you. we talked about your bread tie. Did you finish saying what you were going to say about your bread tie? No. Okay, go ahead. Let go ahead. Talk about it. <laughs> Actually, I don't really remember where I stopped, but anyway, <laughs> my bread tie. So, uh, yes, I think Charlene taught me this. I think I can't really remember to put it on the end of your work if you have a long tail, and it'll keep that managed, right? Um, I, I can't remember if she shared it with me or or the old uh, yarn shop. But what I use it for also, not just that, is to keep spare. Uh, yarn in my notions bag because if I'm out and about and I need to put sleeves on hold right uh, I have I have yarn to do that with if I lose my stitch marker which I've done it so many times at like a doctor's office the thing just rolls away and it goes in never never land can't find it. I just snip a piece of uh, yarn off, make myself a little stitch marker and go, go about my way. So yeah, so it's a dual purpose. You can use it for many things. So what were you going to say about the bread time? I was going to say that it would also be a good way to store that extra little bit of yarn in case for some reason you got a pull or a hole oh, in a project. What a great you idea. Know, and, you, you know, because so, sometimes you might use up the rest of the skein, you might put it in a blanket, you might do something else with it, but to always have a little piece of it Brilliant to make a repair. Idea. What a great idea. It's a, I mean, but that's a good way to store that little bit so it doesn't get all tangled all over the Keep place. Keep it all in a Ziploc bag because, you know, how many of us can literally go through our little scraps and know exactly what yarn it is, what project you need? I, I can do that pretty easily. So Exactly. That's a great or, idea. 
yeah, store it in a little tin or something, you know, then you can always like even for socks, you know, I do so many socks. Thankfully, I've never had to make a sock repair, although I do have the darning, you know, for my great grandmother. Right. But, uh, you know, so it yarn would be a great, right? yeah, it would be a great idea to just store a little bit of yarn just in case I have to make a repair. I'm sure you only need, you know, a little bit. Yeah, so that's a great but, idea. I'm going to start doing that. Yeah, you just came up with that idea? Yeah, because you just said about your... I wish I had a little light bulb to put above your head. I would put a little light bulb above your head. Like, what, that was great. That was really great. I think that... You know, I'm gonna start instead of a light bulb, you might want to just see steam pouring <laughs> out, you know, because usually it's trying to work. <laughs> chugga, 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 right? That's so funny. That is so funny. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's all I've got. I think that's all I have too. Yeah, and uh, we're like we're like we'll rush before the internet like goes crazy again. So, yeah. So we yeah. So I think oh yeah. I guess I should go through my little list. Have yeah. My, make sure you covered everything. Uh, oh yeah. We could we could save we could save the rest for next time, right? You were going to talk about a couple sock patterns you bought. Yeah, but that's that's fine. We could do that next time. We should do that next time. We could save yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. They're really cute. I really like them. Oh, just go talk about them really quick. Really quick. All right. I happen to buy two two patterns because I really just think that uh, this handmade life. Her name is Olivia. I don't know her last name, but I have used a couple of her free patterns, and I just I just think that she doesn't charge a lot for her sock patterns. And she had them on sale. So I'm like, oh my gosh, they were on sale. Not only doesn't she charge a lot, but they were on sale. So I like to, you know, just support her a little bit by buying them. And uh, so anyways, the first one I bought, and I'm sorry, my computer, my printer doesn't print in color. So I don't know if it'll be too difficult to see, but it's called Golden Days and they're shorty socks. And it's just a nice little um, pattern on the top of the sock. I think it would be very easy to make and very nice to have for summer. In fact, I'm planning on trying maybe my the watermelon cotton that you gave me, the cotton, uh, Regia cotton, the watermelon might be pretty in that. And then the second one is called Midsummer Blossoms. And so there's just like two little different socks that you could do there. One's um, like a little anklet. It has a little lace pattern in it. And the other one is a shorty sock. It's completely laced on the top. And I just thought those are really sweet. And if you use a self-striping yarn like she has pictured, it'd be really cute for summer, I think. Or even fall, going into fall. Really, so, really cute. Two patterns that I bought. So, so the last one, Midsummer, what was the name of it? It's Midsummer Blossoms. Wow, I really like that one a lot. Yes. I just two patterns in one. Yes. Because you can wow. you can use it just as the shorty or you know just put the lace in the top and I think it's a pretty touch for a sock so yeah. I'm gonna give it a try I like that and uh, you know I, I've been dying up some self striping yarn and I don't know I see the self striping with a, a nice contrast at the top it would be so cute yes it would it really would so yeah I'm gonna give it a try it might not be tomorrow because you know. I have other things that I'm working on, but I really, I really, uh, I do think that sometimes just simple patterns are so nice. Yes. You know? I agree. I agree. That's why it's so nice. I'm working on the cardigan and then I switch over to that other top because the other top is pretty simple, you know, uh, just garter every time with a slip stitch here or there. So, yeah. Yes. That's easy, important. easy to work on when you can't concentrate or, you know. You're trying to pay attention to a TV show or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vanilla sock is always great. Always, always good. Yeah, yeah but a no, vanilla uh, sock that has a little something in it is nice too, because you just yeah. have a little bit to think. Like at the top, you would just do a little bit of thinking. Of yeah. course, I will change. You know, I don't. Not all of her patterns are toe up. Some of them are cuffed down, and I didn't even look at this. I just bought it and printed it out, so I don't know which way it goes. Yeah, well, doesn't matter because I really I'll always, like them. Yeah, I just will do it. Just yeah. do it toe up. So and you don't have to make it right away when you buy the pattern. You know, you don't have to make it right. No. Away. Yeah. 
Yeah, while we were uh, trying to get Sharon back online, she had uh, told me that the yarn, my uh, yarn supplier has sent out an update on the yarn that they have some yarn available. Uh, I did get some last week. I managed to get 70 skeins. Uh, whew, barely got in there. This time we missed out, right? So what are you going to do? Yarn is in such short supply right now. It really is. <laughs> it's crazy. I never would have experienced or, or thought this would have ever happened. So yarn, yarn dyers are having a tough time finding yarn this year. So uh, yeah, it'll get back to normal soon enough, right? Hopefully. <laughs> I'm sure it will. The sheep aren't going anywhere. They still need to be no. sheared, right? No, and I wonder, I, you know, I wonder if they're having as much difficulty in places like, you know, like in Europe, in, in England, and in, you know, these places where they do have a lot of, I mean, that's just what it is. You know, Edinburgh farms and just sheep and sheep and sheep, you know, if, if they're struggling or if it's just, you know, getting it from wherever it's from into well, our country. From what, you know. from what I understand, communicating, it's a backlog of everything from the mills to the shipping. Shipping is totally and completely backlogged. I ordered, I was supposed to get my shipment four, one, two, three, four, five days in a row. It never arrived. And I've never not gotten my yarn the next day. I order it, it's here the next day. And I waited five days and I'm thinking, on that fifth day, I'm like, it's lost, it's gone. Somebody has 70 skeins of yarn. I don't know what they're gonna do with it, but they have it and I'll have nothing to die. So um, yeah, so it's, I think it's all the way, the mills are backed up because of COVID, right? Right. Um, so processing the yarn has been challenging and then uh, you know transporting it because this yarn specifically comes uh, not all of it, but some of it comes from Peru. Um, so it's backlogged over there. So I don't know. Yeah. Tips aren't well, coming hopefully. in. Trucks aren't coming in. Hopefully it'll it'll change soon. I have noticed like uh, FedEx delivering on days that they normally wouldn't, hours that they wouldn't. So I know that they are working hard. UPS, FedEx, any of those carriers are working hard. I mean, you know, I walk in the neighborhood. I see Amazon Prime every day. It's just like they are working hard to get the products to yeah. the people, you know. Um, you know, but like you said, it. you know, I didn't think about the sheep to the mill. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. Right. It has to come from the, somebody has to shear the sheep. Right. So. Right. And then the mill has to process it. I mean, you know, that spin it up and stuff so that all takes time and I guess really I didn't really you know I wasn't thinking but yeah if you don't have your employees coming in you don't have a whole staff who can't process it the warehouses can't process it to fill orders so yeah it's all back so it all backs up it all backs up and even the the yarn supplier I buy from was working on Sunday I was like right. oh, I got an email from him on Sunday he never on Sunday that I'm aware of so yeah so everybody's just trying to play catch up and boy that email you said was out for an hour and boom missed it oh well what can you do next time yeah. I guess hopefully and this yeah. delivery was late oh, it's crazy but I don't know you guys don't want to hear about that so <laughs> so we want to talk about the zoom call I totally forgot to it's not oh, on my that's, list. It's not on my that's list. Right. I forgot because it's not on my list. So, all right. So we want to put together a Zoom call. Uh, you and I did not come up with a date. Uh, we forgot. <laughs> Plain and simple. So well, I guess we'll figure that out and let everybody know we'll, again. Yeah, we'll have we'll have to know by next time, I guess. And yeah, in several two weeks. people. IJ said she can only do it at night because uh, we would love IJ to be on there. You know, I think uh, I think numerous people uh, said that they could do during the day, that they'd be open to that. So most people can do during the day, but hopefully we can do it at night and have IJ participate too. Uh, so we'll try. So we'll talk about it and we'll 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 do it next time. We really did get caught up in that trying to get that yarn, but that's okay. I can't believe we missed it. And, and an I know it's crazy. Oh well. All right. All right, so uh, apologies for the crazy disruption out of our control. <laughs> and it really was. 
And I'm so sorry that we uh, forgot to get a date and time for the Zoom meeting. I'm kind of mad. So um, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it for sure. We'll do it for sure. And uh, maybe I can get on here and just do a really quick uh, announcement uh, between now and then and we can come up with something. But uh, we so appreciate you joining us. We truly do. Uh, thanks for coming and listening to us babble and talk about our crafts. Um, yeah, and anyone who went over to the shop and took advantage of our birthday sale, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, yeah, I really thank you because things have been, it's been a little bit of a struggle <laughs> to, to say the least. So yeah, so thanks for tuning in. Sharon, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Little hugs for everybody. Little hugs. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay. Happy knitting. Happy Bye. knitting. Be safe, everybody. Bye. Bye.